All right, everybody, we are going to talk about some 3D stuff. So this is a new set of notes, um, and it's really interesting. Uh, I think you're going to like it. There's a lot to do. We get to play around with JoJo a little bit um, and kind of like really get a sense of how things work in the world. So we're dealing with 3D stuff. And the weirdest part about 3D stuff is that you live in a three-dimensional world, but initially people find this uh, a very strange idea because you're so used to living in the XY plane as far as your math is concerned um, that it can be difficult to kind of like get your head around it, but you're going to be okay. You just got to think things through a little bit um, and, and kind of like reorient things. So let's see um, how we're going to label things. So the 3D coordinate system that we use is called a right-handed system. And uh, I will try to explain briefly what that is, but first um, let me label this up. So there's an X, a Y, and a Z. So Z is this new thing. And the X and the Y are maybe not where you expect them to be. So X, Y, if you're in a room right now, which you probably are, X, Y is the floor. And so the Z axis is coming out of the floor. So like the walls are, are some of your walls are intersecting at a Z axis. Let's say that for now. So where your X axis is, is actually down here. And your Y axis is actually there. So what I've labeled right now are the positive X and positive Y axes. And the Z axis is the other axis. So it's actually, it looks to be the vertical one when you're dealing with this. So we have this. So then uh, this region here, is the XY plane, and that's like the floor. And then, so let me try to orient you the way that I think about this. So if you are standing in a room looking at a corner of the room, right? So it's where two walls and the floor come together, and you're standing in the room looking at that corner. So you're standing on the XY plane, so you're standing, uh, I'm not gonna be able to draw this, like uh, you're standing here, and you're looking there at that corner. Okay, so there's a wall that's to your left and there's a wall that's to your right. The wall that is to your right is the YZ plane. And then the wall that's to your left is the XZ plane. So this is, you have to be looking at, you have to be looking at the, the, that point right there, the corner, which is actually the origin, right? It's, it has coordinates, zero, zero, zero. Um, as far as a room is concerned, uh, I'm gonna label this up as if you're in room 299 in our high school. Uh, so this is the floor. This is the windows. And then this would be the whiteboards. The one that I always write on with the projector. Okay, so uh, that can help you kind of orient yourself. It's how I frequently talk about things. I don't know what I'm gonna do in the video, but maybe I'll do that. So let's talk about why this is called a right-handed system. And this is gonna be probably the hardest thing to do in the video, right? So what you wanna do to determine a right-handed system. So instead of standing in the room, looking at the corner, now be in the corner, looking out at the room. What I want you to do is imagine that you turn yourself so you're facing the x-axis, the positive x-axis. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put your hand out and then you're gonna curl your fingers. The way your fingers curl is toward the positive y-axis. And then as you curl your fingers, your thumb is pointed in a specific direction. This is like if you give a normal thumbs up, right? When you give a normal thumbs up, although my thumb looks very bent when I do that, I hope that's okay. Um, when you curl your fingers, your thumb goes a certain direction. The direction your thumb goes is the positive Z axis. So there's like a lot you can do with this. Like if you, if you were doing this and you curled your fingers down to get to the positive Y, then Z would go that way. Um, you don't really have a choice. It's like you have to go from positive X, curl toward positive Y, um, and then your thumb will determine Z. So that's what we mean when we say it's a right-handed system. There are left-handed systems. We just don't deal with them. Um, so let's see if we can, uh, do some other stuff. So because it's strangely kind of oriented, I wanna take another look at the 3D system really quickly. Um, I'm gonna label it again. So X is down here. So when you hand draw these things, what you wanna do is go for like a uh, kind of a hundred, well, let's say like a 240 degree angle or a four pi over three. 
is kind of like a good angle to shoot for, like five pi over four, um, 225. Uh, that helps it like when you draw things, they don't overlap if you draw it that way. So here's X, here's Y. So this is the negative X axis. This is the negative Y axis. And this is the Z axis. So let's uh, label the quadrants, right? So the quadrants that we're used to. So quadrant one would be when X and Y are both positive. So I'm gonna like shade that a little bit. This isn't really shading, hold on. Can I shade? I have an idea. How about a highlighter? Let's see. Okay. So this is quadrant one. That looks gross, but that's quadrant one. And then quadrant two is negative X values, positive Y values. So this would be quadrant two. And then let's, uh, I think, uh, I think that's the wrong color. Uh oh, I didn't pay attention to what color I used. Yeah, so this is quadrant two. And then quadrant three has negative X and negative Y. So quadrant three is the tough one because the Z axis in this perspective is like cutting it up. Um, but I'm gonna shade it and I think it'll be clear, right? It's all of this. So this is in the X, Y plane we're naming quadrants. And then finally, uh, let's go with this. So if we have positive X but negative Y, that's quadrant four of the X, Y plane. And so, uh, I don't know what color that was. I think this, that might be wrong. But anyway, these are the four quadrants of the XY plane. And then there's something that we'll refer to as the first octant. So the first octant is, so why are they called octants, right? So you have your four quadrants in the XY plane. And then I like to imagine you're just on an elevator and you can either go up or you can go down. So if you are in the first quadrant, you go up or down, that gives you two octants. If you're in the second quadrant, you can go up or down, that's two more. Quadrant three, you can go up or down, that's two more, and then quadrant four, the same. So you end up with eight octants. The only one that people really agree on is the first octant. The first octant is when everything is positive. So let me, ooh, I don't know what I did there. Um, so the first octant, O-C-T-A-N-T, -T, is when X, Y, and Z are all greater than zero. So all of the other octants exist, but instead of giving them numbers, we usually just talk about above the second quadrant, below the second quadrant, um, above or below the third, and so on. So instead of dealing with like eight different numbers, we have the first octant, everyone agrees on that, everything is positive. That's like where the world pretty much happens. Um, and then everything else will just be above or below, you know, whatever, relative to where you are. Okay, so we got a right-hand system. The x-axis is maybe not where you expected it. The z-axis appears to be the vertical axis, which also kind of makes sense, right? So um, if you uh, draw uh, an x-y axis on a piece of paper and put your hand along the x-axis and curl your fingers toward the y-axis, uh, you will see that your thumb goes straight up out of it. So it does make sense that that's how it would be. It's as if we're looking down on a sheet of paper when we do this. Um, and it's almost like you're Superman flying over the coordinate plane along the y-axis from the negatives to the positives, and you're just like looking down. That's the perspective that you would get. So, you know, imagine yourself doing that. All right, let's see what's next. Um, oh, I have like single page view here. All right, sketching points in space. All right, I am not super gifted at this, but I'm going to try it anyway because you don't need to be great at everything that you do. So uh, to sketch a point in space is really going to be based on your ability to draw a rectangular prism. So let's see what I mean by that. And then I will probably cut this video and come back and do more. Uh, all right, so I wish I could draw lines in this, which like maybe I can, but I don't know how. Uh, all right, here we go. So I'm gonna draw a rectangular prism. Whew. Okay. So I'm gonna start with kind of, start with that. Then we're gonna go up a level, maybe uh, 
Will it help if I change colors? Let's see, let me go up a level. And so once I've done that, what I wanna do is, so then we kind of like duplicate the, oh God, it's hard. Hold on, let me do, I got an idea. Let's go up and up, and then I can just try to connect those somehow. Okay, not terrible. And now it's all about like parallel lines. So I wanna be parallel, let's go up here, and then I need to be parallel as I go across. And then I'm gonna go here. I mean, you can probably already draw this. I believe this is easier to do on paper. Like I'm not super good at it on paper either. Okay, so I have a rectangular prism. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill in like some axes, right? So this right there is my X axis. And then this right here is my Y axis. And then uh, up here is my Z axis. Okay, so let's think about this. So if I want to plot the point five, four, three, so that's an ordered triple and it's X, Y, Z. So X is five. So what I want to do is move five along the X axis. So five along the X axis in my picture will put me here. So I've gone five along the X axis. Then what I need to do is I need to go four along the Y axis. So four along the Y axis in my picture will put me here. So this point right here in the XY plane is five, four, but in three dimensions, we would say it's five, four, zero. And also, I mean, I could label, I should label, this point is five, Y is zero, Z is zero. This point is X is zero, Y is four, Z is zero. So we have a lot of points. Now what I wanna do is I wanna move up three on the Z axis. Well, I'm gonna say that that is this. So this will be three on the Z axis. So if I follow along the lines, so let me make this like small-ish and then try to follow along. Here we go. So as long as I stay on this part of my prism, I'm always at the height Z equals three because it's the top of that box and the, that box is like three feet tall. So I'm always three up. So drawing the rectangular prism, this is why we call them rectangular coordinates, right? It's a rectangular prism. All points can be seen as um, a vertex of a rectangular prism. So then this point right here is gonna be the point X is five, Y is four, and Z is three. All right, so drawing these things, not the biggest deal in the world. Uh, it's very useful if you can imagine them um, and just think about it. Like every point that is on, let me, let me highlight another face for you. Every point that's on this face has to have an X coordinate of five. And so we'll find out that that face is in the plane X equals five just as the top of the box is in the plane Z equals three. Um, and then, you know, we could keep going. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna cut this here and I will be back to do more. So here we go.